Hey folks, Jeff Jackson, your alfalfa and forage specialist with Cropland here. You know, a few of you have called me about some cooler temperatures, cold weather coming, had to break out the old ear flapper hat, worried about your sorghum sedan and your forage sorghum crop this year. Well, there's this threat. There's uh, people on social media that always talk about, don't plant sorghum, it'll kill your cows. Well, prussic acid is a real deal, and it does happen when we have a frost event or a freeze in the system. So. Some of you might need this hat, others of you in the south might not yet, you'll get things harvested in great shape. But what happens is, we have a cool event. So let's say it gets down to 32, 30 degrees overnight. So what happens is, you're going to have some of these upper leaves first of all. If you have a canopy out there, the upper leaves are going to get some frost damage. They were probably going to get part of this leaf tip that gets affected. And what happens is, so we have cell membrane in here. And when the water or the moisture in that cell membrane freezes, it expands just like ice does and it ruptures the cell. Well, when that cell ruptures, it releases a gas called prussic acid. Now, prussic acid is basically equivalent to cyanide gas. So when people say, oh, it shouldn't be that big a deal, it just froze a little bit. Uh, how much prussic acid will it take to hurt my cows? I just always ask the question too, how much cyanide gas do you want to feed your cows? So let's just avoid the situation. We can manage this very easily. Here's the message. If you have a light freeze and you have leaf tip damage, or you're expecting some leaf tip damage, take the cows out today. You don't want to have the scenario where you have less cows to bring home tomorrow because you didn't heed to the warning. So if it's going to freeze or there's a th threat of it, take the cows out. How soon can we come back? It usually takes about 7 to 10 days for this gas to escape from the leaf material. So it's a short-lived gas. It will go away. But 7 to 10 days after that freezes, we need to make sure uh, that we have that time frame for the cows to be safe. So have a crop out there, it freezes, keep them out for 7 to 10 days. If you're in the middle of that period and it freezes again and causes more leaf damage, the clock starts over because we have fresh prussic acid in that leaf and we have to start over a new seven to 10 day window. So again, leaf material, it could happen at that 32 down to 30 degrees from a light frost. Now, if you have a hard frost into the 28, 26 degree range, we would consider that almost a hard frost on sorghum. But the thing you need to watch for from a grazing perspective is if we kill the top of that plant with a frost down to 26 degrees and we're gonna wait our seven to 10 days, we need to go back make sure that we don't have any new tillers at the bottom of that plant because if the top dies but it doesn't kill the bottom of the plant and we get new tillers these little tillers at the bottom can be high in prussic acid so at the end of seven to ten days make sure the whole plant's dead if it's not completely dead yet to go regraze and you have these little green tillers at the bottom that are starting to shoot out we need to have another hard frost to continue killing that plant so we can graze it seven to ten days after the tillers die as well. Then your cows can go to town, have a heyday, get the rest of that crop harvested. Okay, so that's grazing. Grazing is really the only opportunity where prussic acid is going to cause us a lot of issues. Now, if you have a pearl millet, a pearl millet does not have a prussic acid issue, but we have forage sorghums like this guy back here, sorghum sedans, a straight sedan grass. Now, let's say you're going to cut hay. Uh, you're planning to cut hay, make some dry hay yet late in the fall, or stockpile it. If it freezes, it's not really an issue because we're going to have to cut the plant, probably going to go through a crimper, it's going to lay on the ground a few days by the time you cut it, dry it, rake it, bale it, store it, prussic acid should have evaporated, not an issue at all. If you're going to cut this with a swather and crimp it, let it wilt for a couple days and chop silage, again, you're going to take that leaf material and it's going to go through the crimper, it's going to get banged up, it's going to evaporate fairly well, then we're going to go through a chop and we're going to make a bunch of small pieces, right? half to three quarter inch material. We're gonna let that gas escape rapidly. We're gonna to go to a bag, a bunker, a pile. We're gonna have fermentation. It's gonna help us reduce all those issues. So again, really the only threat for prussic acid is a grazing scenario. If you're gonna make hay or do silage, just go business as usual. Now again, if you have cut that crop recently and you have little tillers out there regrowing in the field, we need to get that material so just as an example, this crop was cut about two weeks ago, and we have about 
oh, 16, 17 inches of material out there. We do not want to graze this quite yet. We want to get it up 24 inches tall before we regraze because this new material on top having some rapid growth could have some potential prussic acid. So if you've grazed it once already and you've got regrowth or you just cut it and the regrowth is coming, 24 inches is the key number. So again, ladies and gentlemen, prussic acid is a concern. It's equivalent to cyanide poisoning, but if we wait 7 to 10 days after those events to regraze those fields, we shouldn't have any trouble. So again, just to, to debunk some of those wives' tales or uh, conspiracies out there that plant and sorghum will kill cows, we'll just manage it well. We have more cows killed this year by lightning or cars than we will prussic acid as long as you and I are aware and we manage appropriately. So Jeff Jackson, your alfalfa and forage specialist from Cropland. Thank you and have a good day.